My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled, Visual Analytics Comes of Age. What if a sensor could not only record purely visual activity in the real world, but could also interpret and then take action based on what it sees? Could this capability be exploited in oil and gas? Recently, I participated in a webinar with Osprey Informatics on visual analytics, a technology with big upside in the oil and gas sector. Machine interpretation of visual data is not new. My business card now has a QR code printed on it that takes you directly to my website. Airlines rely on machine-readable luggage tags to route your belongings through the maze of conveyor belts that connect your baggage to its flight. And modern cash registers scan retail tags to figure out what you're purchasing, its weight, its price, and any applicable discounts. These examples all rely on some kind of human-invented specialized symbology, barcodes, bag tags, and QR codes. Well, that's nice, but kind of limiting in situations where there's no practical way to use these symbols. Think about a couple of recent examples from Apple that use the image of your face as a password. What if these kinds of sensors could be put to use for other things? It should be no surprise that visual data capture and interpretation systems are evolving rapidly, enabled by several digital technologies that are combining and recombining to create a seriously clever new category of analytics that works with visual data. First are the low-cost sensors, in this case, optical sensors, that see in all light and weather conditions, including foggy weather, rain, snow, dust, and night. And cloud computing, that connect multiple sensors to the cloud, where data storage and compute services are effectively unlimited and practically free. Machine learning, a technique where software learns, in this case, how to interpret what it sees by being fed thousands of similar images, or in the case of facial ID, just your image, and artificial intelligence, a variation of machine learning, where the computer takes an action based on a decision from interpreting the data from the sensor. And voila, we have a new kind of solution that can, quote, watch the real world and take independent action based on what it sees. Call it robotic eyes. Historically, the hardware for the eyes has been the tricky part, but it's the software that creates the magic. In oil and gas, these systems can be taught to recognize virtually anything, from intruders at the gate, to contractors on the site, to wildlife at the fence. And sensors are not limited to data from the visible light spectrum. The software can detect plumes of invisible vapors, like an escaping gas or steam jetting out from a pinhole in a pipe, and determine the composition of that vapor. I've never thought about the world in these terms before. I've only ever assumed that man-made symbols with sharp edges and lines, like the digits of a license plate, could be interpreted by computers. But a system that can take in any scene and interpret it correctly? Well, that's pretty revolutionary. Moreover, these new visual analytic systems, interconnected via the web, demonstrate many of the same attributes of other exponential technologies. Multiple sensors connected to a single machine learning engine mean that the single software machine learns and absorbs data from all of the sensors and improves its decision-making over time. Its learning ability is therefore superhuman in terms of its range of interpretable situations and decisions it can correctly and reliably take. Today, these systems are able to recognize and interpret with 90% accuracy what they detect, and they'll only get better over time. They'll also fall in cost. In fact, They're already ridiculously lower cost than paying for full-time screen-watching operators in a control room. A visual analytics system operating in the visible light spectrum might be in the range of 15 to 25 cents an hour to operate, as compared to $25 an hour for a squad of guys. Thinking here, $60,000 each all in, one guy per shift, three shifts, gross it up 30%, and uh, yield 24-7 coverage. Robotic eyes are more reliable than human eyes, too. Operators need bathroom breaks, take vacations, and require training and supervision. And humans are actually easily bored with watching screens that don't change that frequently. Where would such visual analytics find a home in oil and gas? I see the key benefits in improving safety and compliance at lower cost, improving operational effectiveness at lower cost, and increasing the productivity of the workforce. Here's just a few examples. Have you ever toured the control room of an oil processing plant? 
These on-site bunkers, although the new ones are actually off-site, usually in some downtown office tower where people actually want to work and live, have the usual bank of operators at the SCADA controls, and sometimes feature simple visual feeds from key positions at the facilities, such as gates, fuel tanks, loading facilities, and storage yards. Typically, there's not a lot of visual sensors. That's because there's not a lot of real estate in control rooms to allow for too many monitors. And monitors might rotate through several views, meaning that something might be missed by the human handlers. But visual analytic systems could monitor hundreds of sensor points at a time and take actions based on what's happening in the real world. Only unusual situations would need to be handed off to a human to take action. Another use case is improving compliance. Oil and gas facilities need to prove that operations have effective compliance regimes in place and that the facilities comply with regulations. Some compliance activities in some jurisdictions will require eyes-on inspection of assets and facilities to detect and report on operating state and condition. Some incidents will require demonstration that compliance monitoring was in effect and operational. It's easy to assume that regulations imply person on site to carry out compliance activities, but that's not the case. Eyes on site no longer means person on site. This is an orthodoxy of the industry that can change. Visual analytic systems, with their GPS and date and time stamping, still photos, and video, will be treated with greater confidence than some timesheet that reportedly shows an operator drove the perimeter. The monitoring of greenhouse gas emissions, particularly methane, is a task that could be accomplished with robotic eyes that can read and record rogue emissions once the analytic system knows what to look for. And visual systems will be handily better than humans at this task. And how about safety outcomes? Imagine an analytic system that could detect the presence of a field worker and recognize that they are not wearing high visibility clothing or are smoking in a hazardous area or didn't make use of safety harnesses or hand grips. The system could send a gentle reminder, please hold the handrail only when it needs to, or could alert the contractor that his people are out of compliance along with photo evidence. The system could monitor yards, intersections, rights of way to identify emerging unsafe conditions such as heavy equipment in close proximity to people. Some remote and offshore assets still have high levels of human presence whose role is to provide eyes on to the facilities. Visual analytics systems offer the potential to substitute robotic eyes for staff, including some kinds of permanent staff as well as the services contractors, out of the field, which improves the productivity of the workforce in general as well as reducing safety concerns stemming from the travel. Transitioning field services from the typical circuit to exception-based visits would lower costs dramatically. Safety outcomes, near misses, incidences, and compliance with safety protocols should all improve with visual analytic safety. Another use case is in managing field services. Imagine a supervisory engineer who has contracted for services to a well site. Using visual analytics, the system could alert the supervisory engineer by automatically opening and closing gates, logging arrival and departure times, and monitoring site activities, inventory moves, fluid levels, spills, and vapors. This could move supervisory engineers out of field and provide them with greater leverage, i.e. monitoring more services at more wells in parallel. In drilling, an analytics system could monitor drill site activities, cuttings composition, mud features, sand levels, fluids, and other relevant visual data at a central drilling and fracking control facility. Visual analytics should improve the effectiveness of field services and reduce the friction associated with contracting for those services. Visual data could eventually feature directly into non-productive time, or NPT, a key determinant in site cost calculations. And finally, the most obvious but probably least impactful use case is in security monitoring. A visual analytics system could monitor perimeters and access points to facilities such as gates and interpret if a visitor is wildlife, such as a deer at the gate, an expected and authorized service team, or an unknown and presumed a hostile intruder. The system could automatically perform tactics depending on the visitor, such as broadcasting danger sounds to animals, greetings to approved visitors, and warnings to trespassers. Security costs should decline while actual security goes up. Visual analytics simplify control room operations, improve oversight of the operating environment, allow for consolidation of control facilities, reduce the drive around requirements to get eyes on site, and reduce the number of operations headcount. This adds up to a safer, lower cost, and more productive operation through digital. 
If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.